Ray Dalio in 1937? What does one have to do with the other? Ray was born in 1949, so that can't be it. Well, let me tell you what it is. Back in 2015, Ray Dalio, who's a billionaire founder of the hedge fund giant Bridgewater Associates, compared the current economic climate to the one that Americans grappled with some 80 years ago. So let's take a look. This chart here is the overlap of the chart from 80 years ago and then the current chart. 80 years ago was shown in the blue and the current chart of the S&P 500 is in the black up into about uh, maybe a week to two weeks ago at the most. And here are the key points that Ray Dalio has made regarding the similarities here. Number one, debt limits reached a bubble top causing the economy and markets to peak and that was back in 1929 as well as in 2007. Number two, interest rates hit zero amid the depression back in 1932 and then also in 2008. Number three, money printing starts kicking off deleveraging back in 1933 and then also in 2009. Number four, the stock market and risky assets rally from 1933 through 1936 and then from 2009 to 2017. Number five, the economy improves during a cyclical recovery from 1933 through 1936 and from 2009 to 2017. And then the last similarity, number six, the central bank tightens a bit, resulting in a self-reinforcing downturn in 1937. And then that is what remains for today. And the combination of these monetary and fiscal tightening pressures created a significant sell-off in risk assets Dalia wrote. He continues, stocks fell the most, but home prices arrested their gains and dipped negative as well. So we fast forward here to today, and Jesse Felder of the popular Felder Report blog says that the analog is tracking better than ever. If it continues, and one look at this chart here, one should be worried. He also states that it seems central bank tightening into a self-reinforcing downturn is becoming a more distinct possibility as the economic cycle ages and inflation pressures grow. He wrote further, in other words, the policy stakes are now very high and history provides a clear roadmap for the markets. And lastly, he says that the correlation between the S&P 500 over the past four years and the four years leading up to 1937, the top in 1937, is roughly 94%. And 94% in a correlation over a four-year period is significant. And he lastly says that, as he has suggested in the past, Price analogs are not very valuable on their own, but when the fundamentals also parallel closely, they become far more interesting. And this is definitely very interesting. And as I've told you recently and in the past, I am looking for the point in time when the S&P reaches the previous high that we had in, say, early 2018. And at that high, we're going to be at the maximum risk. So we're looking very closely at that. So it isn't necessarily the chart matchup that I'm looking at. It's just simply we're looking up a, at a very large monster double top, a potential double top. So now let's go look at another very interesting chart. So this chart here is to show you that uh, parallels or analogs are not necessarily all that uncommon. And this chart here comes from Market Anthropology and Eric Swartz. And basically what this chart shows or suggests is that the big unwind is taking place for stocks and the S&P 500. It shows parallels with silver and gold, their moves from seven years ago. And on the chart here, the uh, the lighter color, I believe the lighter color 
is the S&P 500, and the darker color there is silver. The lighter color ends there uh, before the chart of silver does, so you know that the one on uh, the top is the S&P 500. And according to Eric Swartz, basically he believes, he suspects that equities, the S&P 500, is taking the long goodbye, very much along the lines of how silver and gold did when they exhausted their parabolic tops in 2011 and then declined. And Swartz points to similar action with the S&P 500 making a lower high recently below the January record close that we've talked about so many times. And Swartz says that the S&P's rebound is over if it keeps acting like silver did, or as he puts it, should the comparative continue to prove present, equities are now on the backside of the long retracement rally that began in April. Now, although analogs aren't necessarily all that uncommon, they are somewhat interesting. And again, I'm not looking at these charts here per se. I'm looking at my own charts showing that potential double top. So, Keep your eyes open. So for today, that's Chew Dog Charts. Thank you.